It seems like every day there's a new pregnancy myth floating around the internet, so today we're busting the most common myths that I hear from my patients at prenatal visits. Welcome back to Every Mama's Midwife. If you're new, my name's Jess. I'm a certified nurse midwife and infertility mom, and I'm currently 31 weeks pregnant with an IVF pregnancy. There is a ton of misinformation floating around TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, and probably just about every social media platform when it comes to pregnancy. These are the most common myths that I see as a pregnant woman that drive me bonkers, and also the ones I get the most concern about from my own patients. Hands down, the number one myth that I have to bust for my patients is, can I sleep on my back? And the answer is yes, you can sleep however is comfortable. Yet you will see ads on the internet and read in your pregnancy books that you have to sleep on your left side. Since I'm pregnant, I recently got a targeted ad for a pregnancy sleep pillow, and the ad said that sleeping on your back doubles your risk of stillbirth. It made me absolutely livid. The origin of this statement is a retrospective study from years and years ago where they asked a whole bunch of mothers who had had stillbirths questions like, well, did you sleep on your back? And these poor bereaved mothers were like, eh, yeah, I think so, because it's a common sleeping position. The researchers incorrectly concluded that back sleeping led to stillbirth. In the past few years, however, much better studies have been done, including a prospective study, meaning they followed thousands of women through pregnancy and childbirth, and they found no difference in stillbirth rates in women who slept on their back versus women who slept on their sides. An additional study was done that tracked blood flow to the uterus and oxygenation to baby in different sleeping positions, and the researchers found no difference in moms who laid on their back versus moms who laid on their side. You can sleep in whatever position feels comfortable. If it's comfortable, it's okay. Number two, hiccups. Do you need to be worried if your baby gets hiccups in the womb? Absolutely not. However, if you are in a pregnancy group for your due date on Facebook, someone will inevitably try to convince you that if your baby has hiccups, it's because their umbilical cord is around their neck and that the baby is in distress. This is because of a study that was frequently referenced by a family practice physician in several articles that showed for sheep, there possibly was a correlation between hiccups and nuchal cord or umbilical cord around the neck. For humans, however, there is no correlation between nuchal cord and hiccups. And hiccups are actually quite common in the human fetus just because of their immature nervous system. They're also practicing their breathing movements in amniotic fluid, so this is not cause for panic. Virtually all babies get hiccups in the womb, and it is okay for them to get hiccups every day. This brings me to myth number three. Many patients worry about the umbilical cord being wrapped around their baby's neck at birth. Nuchal cord is actually a very common occurrence in humans and is present in as many as 25 to 30% of births and is also not cause for panic. TV and movies have really perpetuated this myth that if your baby has their cord around their neck at birth, it will kill them. I'm looking at you, Handmaid's Tale. Most of the time, providers are able to do one of two maneuvers to get the cord off of the baby's neck at birth. After the head comes out, we can feel for the cord, and if it's very loosely wrapped around the baby's neck, can just pull it over the baby's neck before delivering the rest of the baby, also known as reducing the cord. If the cord is very tightly wrapped around the baby's neck, we can do what's called somersaulting the baby, where after the head comes out, we feel for the cord, we can't reduce it, and so we keep the baby's head close to the mother's thigh or close to the perineum as the rest of the baby comes out, and then after the baby is out, unwrap the cord from around the baby's neck before handing the baby to mom. Sometimes a cord around the baby's neck will cause drops in the heart rate with contractions or with pushing that may lead your provider to recommend a C-section or a vacuum to expedite delivery, but for how often nuchal cords occur, they are very rarely fatal. Myth number four, eating pineapple will put you into labor and you can't have pineapple in early pregnancy. This is a myth that I hadn't heard when I was in midwifery school, but has become really popular over the last few years. The origin of this myth is that in some developing countries, traditional healers will use unripe pineapple juice to induce abortions. Evidence-Based Birth did a great podcast on this topic a few years ago. I'll drop a link in the description so you can listen to the podcast or read the transcript. There have been some studies that show pineapple juice applied directly to uterine muscle tissue will cause it to contract, but that quality seems to be lost when the pineapple juice is consumed by mouth. So unless you found a way to put the pineapple juice directly onto your uterus, it is not going to induce labor and it is safe to eat in pregnancy. I will admit that when I was pregnant and approaching my due date with my daughter, I was starting to feel kind of desperate and I did try eating an entire pineapple and it did not work. I was still going to work three days past my due date. 
I've got one more pregnancy myth to bust, but if you found this video helpful so far, make sure to give it a thumbs up so it can reach as many women as possible and we can stop the pregnancy myths once and for all. This last myth isn't as common, but I think it's an important one. You can't get foot rubs while you're pregnant or you could induce labor. The origin of this myth is lazy husbands who don't want to touch your feet. I'm just kidding. It's because in Chinese medicine, there are acupressure points on the feet and ankles that are associated with the uterus. I will sometimes encourage my patients who are going past their due date to go have an acupuncture session and to induce labor, they usually will put needles in your feet, but a run of the mill foot rub is not going to induce labor. So if your feet are killing you, it is okay to ask for one. I hope we were able to put some pregnancy myths to rest today. If there are more pregnancy myths that you have questions about, please drop them in the comments. In the coming weeks, I'm going to post a free childbirth education class for mamas who want to avoid epidurals and medications in labor. Make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss those videos. Thank you so much for watching.